Hello, so this is going to be a torture test video on the GP5 using lie, um, as I've done on a few other masks. Now what I'm expecting is that the mask will survive perfectly, maybe with some damage there to the metal, and some damage there to the metal, maybe some sort of stuff happening to the glass. I've got a sealed GP5 filter here, um, which is sort of floating because apparently it doesn't sink. But what I'm going to do is put the lie in there. Now the filter's sealed because obviously if water gets into a filter it will ruin it anyway. But what I want to see uh, you know, if will happen is if it's exposed to lie will the outside of the filter break down. Um, so we'll get the sodium hydroxide out now, you know, also known as lime. Um, and I'll put it in. That's very hot water. I filled it out with the hot water tap then added a kettle full of boiling water to the top of it. So. That water's probably sort of 70 degrees Celsius at the moment. So the lye should look fine. Now obviously, as I said before, be very careful if you try something like this at home because caustic soda can cause permanent eye damage and skin damage if it gets onto your skin. So let's shake some in. Now obviously wear gloves when I extract it out of there. Now you can hopefully see that there's a bit of a reaction going on. What I'm just going to do in a second is get the washing up brush thing and just use it to shove <coughs> this stuff down a bit. So, you know, it, hopefully the GP5 sits underwater now. I don't think the filter's going to stay underwater, so it's not. But maybe we'll see something interesting where you might see like the line on the filter where um, the stuff's happened to it. So what I'm going to do now is obviously leave this in there like that. Um, I'll stop the video here and come back in probably 20 minutes time, something like that, and see what's happened. But as you can see, the water's getting cloudier and cloudier. Now this will probably take any talc off the GP5 that was in there. Um, but you know, what else will it do? But as I said, every other mask I've tried this with so far has actually survived, you know, just with minor damage to the metal parts and the glass which does, you know, prove that these masks would have been effective against quite strong chemical agents. So, I will leave that like that for now, um, I will stop the video, and I'll be back in 20 or so minutes to um, do an update. Now, this has only been in there about 10 minutes so far, but it's actually fizzing quite a lot, so I'll just let you see if you can hear that. How well it's going to sound on camera, I don't know, but it seems that the filter is definitely reacting somehow to the lie because it seems like most of the fizzing is coming from the filter so I can't really see the mask under there because it's quite cloudy um, I won't bother stirring it yet because the mask is pretty much fully submerged but it does seem there's a bit more of a reaction going on with this mask and filter compared to some of the others but as I said a lot of that could just be the filter maybe the paint on the filter or something else so um, yeah I'll come back in another 10 or 20 minutes and we'll do another update and see what's happening now, how obvious this will be on the camera, I'm not sure, but you can actually see there seems to be some kind of reaction going on on the sort of metal voice diaphragm, the crimping bit of the GP5. So if I zoom in there, yeah, you can just about see it. Look at that. It's um, literally burning off at the moment. So what you've got there, by the look of it, is the lie burning through the metal there. So if that's aluminium, that will probably be why because the aluminium uh, reacts with lye, it dissolves into hydrogen gas. So I'll leave that in there a bit longer, because obviously this is exactly what I wanted to see, some sort of reaction going on. Um, so there's no point obviously stopping the test now. Um, it's been in there probably a good 30 minutes at this point, but while there's a reaction going on, I'm gonna keep it in there and see what sort of results we get. But as you can see, uh, that's literally kind of smoking off inside the uh, water. Right, I've got my chemical gloves on. Now there's still a bit of a reaction happening, but it's slowed down quite a lot. But you can probably see now that there's definitely been some uh, reaction on that metal. Look at that. Now interestingly, that's sort of the original colour. You can actually see some smoke coming off of that. So that might be quite hazardous with those fumes. I'm just going to warn you that now, so probably don't try this at home. I'll turn the extractor fan on, might be a good idea. Um, so yeah, what you can see there is where some of this has reacted more than other bits because the actual, you know, metal has changed colour. That's more of the original colour, and some of this, you know, you can see where it's really kind of reacted to the line. Okay, same with the eyepieces again. Um, the glass itself looks absolutely fine, but you can notice there that some of those eyepieces, uh, the metal rings around them, have certainly reacted quite strongly. Anyway, 
The rubber itself looks totally fine. All the markings are still visible on the mask. The rubber valves look absolutely fine. Some bit of metal damage to the bottom here as well, just there. Don't know how obvious that's going to be on the camera, but that's certainly changed colour with the paint. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the inside of the mask. What I'll do in a minute is pour all the lye away down the drain. But the inside of the mask looks pretty fine. I'm not going to test the valves today. It's going to have to dry out properly before I do anything like that. But yeah, that looks all good in a sense. So it just seems to be some damage to the metal of the mask as usual. But otherwise the GP5 seems to have held up fine. Now, if you left it in live for 24 hours, maybe some of the mask would have dissolved away. Anyway, let's see what's happened with the filter, because this might have been interesting, because it did sound like the filter was reacting a bit. Um, paint still seems completely solid on there. And that overall looks quite good. Um, I can't see any damage to the filter whatsoever. So, um, although it sounded like it was hissing, maybe it wasn't. Maybe, you know, the paint was ever so slightly reactive, but it's certainly not discoloured. Um, so there you go. GP5 torch test on the light, it looks like it survived totally. When it's fully dried and clean, I'll put it on on another video just to give it a quick test to see if with banana oil or something it still seems to, um, you know, make an airtight seal. But yeah, it seems it survived absolutely fine other than some sort of corrosion and reaction with the metal. So yeah, very interesting. Um, and again, it shows, you know, even cheap surplus masks can hold up to some pretty nasty chemicals for an extended period of time. So anyway, I'm going to pour this away now, because um, obviously I don't want lie lying around, hard on the expression, um, and I'll give the mask a good rinse off and everything. But thanks for watching, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Uh, it's been quite fascinating to see what's happened. And yeah, the GP5 seems to have survived the test of just some minor damage to some of the metal parts.